Hello and welcome to the Widow's Oil. Today I want to look at how exactly are we born again? What does it mean to be born again? And what does it not mean? To understand being born again, of course, we, we need to look at John 3. And then I'm also going to look in John 1 where it explains to us how we are not born again. So let's first read what Jesus said about the new birth. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now being born of water and Spirit, spiritually means by the word because the, the water represents the word. It says that the bride is cleansed by the washing of the water of the word and the spirit. So you need to be born of those two. Then you cannot enter the kingdom of God. People think it means the natural birth, the water in the womb. People think all sorts of very immature, childish things. It's got nothing to do to, with a natural birth. Jesus is speaking of the water of the word and then the spirit by which he, baptize, he baptizes us, which is a spiritual birth, a spiritual um, rebirth, which comes by the Holy Spirit. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, are you a teacher of Israel and you do not know these things? There are people running to rabbis thinking that they know the answers. Jesus, yes, just says to Nicodemus that he doesn't know. Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No man has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. That is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And in this, he's actually also speaking against the um, mystery religions, which they had then even with the oral tradition of ascending using what they call Jacob's ladder, ascending into heaven. Jesus goes on to explain how men can be saved. He says, and as, the Mo and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. And that is also what Jesus told them when he spoke against them searching the scriptures yet not coming to Christ. 
So yeah, again, he says the only way, he is the door, it's the only way of salvation. You must be born of the water, of the word, which washes you so that you, you get renewed by the renewal of your mind and so that you develop the mind of Christ and you need to have the Holy Spirit that teaches you. So it is the Father who gives the Holy Spirit. The Father draws us to Christ and then Christ brings us to the Father and it is the Father who gives the good gift of the Holy Spirit to those that ask him. Luke eleven thirteen. if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Understanding John 1, verse 12 to 13. In John 1, verse 12 to 13, we also gain more understanding of what it means to be born again by this scripture. It says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So if we look at this table that I made, it explains how I understand this. I'm not saying I am right. I'm just saying that I'm trying to understand this scripture and this table has helped me understand a bit better what it means. It says being born again is not by blood. So it's not being born of blood, meaning relying on physical lineage or genetics. And then I put some examples. For example, saying that you're a modern day descendant of Abram. It's not about the physical seed. You see, and some ex other examples uh, that we see is Zionism, the so-called British Israel movement, or any of the so-called movements of that where people believe that they are physical descendants of Israel, or the Black Hebrew, etc. Now that doesn't mean that I don't believe that there is physical seed of Israel on Earth, and that even if that a believer or a Jewish person could have that. I'm not denying that. I'm just saying that in God's plan, that doesn't matter. And people don't like to hear this. And I want to tell those um, people who are of European descent who are holding on to this, especially if you are against the Zionists, you are actually then doing no different than what they are. You are not helping the fight against Zionism by believing that you are the true seed when you are believing that it's a physical seed because then you are just believing the same lie, you see. So then you actually also, even though you do not understand it, you are actually playing into this whole Zionism movement you basically provide the oil for the fire which they create by saying that you are teaching replacement theology or that you are an anti-Semite who wants to take the spiritual heritage of those whom they see it belongs to. So any physical stuff is working against true Christianity which teaches that the spiritual seed is Christ. The seed was counted in Christ and anybody that's in Christ spiritually is the seed of Abram. You see, the moment we make it about first physical earthly things, we've had, we get wars and we get great trouble and we get antichrist. That, so I'm not trying to offend anybody or make you angry at me, but I'm just saying the truth. Um, if we don't speak the truth, we are going to be destroyed by the lie. And we need those that are lovers of the truth and zealous for the truth to shed the lies that the enemy has put on us. A lot of us are grasping straws and we are believing 
many of the lies still, even though we are seeking the truth. And then we hold fast to things like that it is of physical genealogy that we can be born of God. We cannot be born of God by blood, the scripture says. But as many as received him, he gave right to become the children of God to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, but of God, being born again by the water and the spirit, having the mind of Christ and the Holy Spirit. Now the second one says you, you also cannot be born of God by the will of the flesh. Now, in that case, I think it refers to salvation by works. As I say, this is my understanding of it. Anybody is welcome to correct me if you see something wrong. This is just me trying to understand the scripture and to show you how men are devising their own ways to be born from above. All doctrines of men, religions of men, traditions but none of them able to sp give spiritual life. Only, there is only one way. So being born of the flesh, which means salvation by works, which is, for example, Judaism, Catholicism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, etc., etc. There are so many. It's not, the, I'm just giving a, few of the most well-known ones that will give you the idea and you can fill in the details because the thing I'm trying to do is give people a bird's eye view because a lot of you have a lot of knowledge so I don't need to tell you every little thing I can just tell you the way I see it which may help you um, to see something in a better focus than what you're already seeing it or maybe having it confirmed by hearing somebody else that sees it and to say, okay, I'm not mad. I, she she also sees it. Um, I often find that, that it's really comforting to hear of other people who see these things because it's very, very rare to find people who can actually see these things. So I gladly share what I see, but it doesn't help to be angry at me because these are the, just the things the Bible says. I'm just showing you what the Bible says and what I've seen, which um, basically is a testimony to the truth of that which I read in that place in the Bible. So I see that we cannot be born by the will of the flesh by trying to do works. Now the third one, you cannot be born by the will of man. You cannot be born again spiritually by the will of man. I said in my previous video regarding the New Age Yeshua that that's exactly what they do. So basically what that is, is willing and proclaiming yourself a child of God by religious ritual and confession, which is basically wishful thinking, if you think about it. Good examples that we see in our modern day is the so-called sinner's prayer, which is also called greasy grace, where you say a prayer and then it is believed that you are born again. But so many people then struggle um, and they know that nothing really has changed inside, but they've been told that they can just say this little prayer and that it will change them. and. It just doesn't work that way. The other one is the new age where they have all their um, rituals and beliefs. They will it to be so. They believe if they say it, it will be so. You also get in the Christian church the so-called word of faith movement. It's very much the same type of idea. Now, of course, we can speak in faith and we can have faith. So it's not always wrong, but it's abused in the churches and especially regarding these sinners' prayers. And then what we still have today, but it's especially 
also um, saw it in Catholicism and Protestantism was the re religious ritual, like the confession of faith in the catechism, when the young people confess their faith. So they have these rituals, which is very much like this sinner's prayer, um, but they did train up the children first with a catechism, so it's somewhat better they at least have some knowledge rather than this modern one where you do the sinner's prayer. But all these are the will of man. It's you saying these things and willing it to be so. Um, I could even include the baptism of babies in this list, although, yeah, I'm just going to stick to this. Um, but these are all ways where people want to be born of God by using these three. We cannot be born by blood, the will of the flesh, or the will of man. And this scripture in one in John 1, 12 to 13, makes me think so much of this scripture in 1 Kings 19, God's revelation to Elijah. Then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice, which is being born of God, a still small voice, the Holy Spirit, rather than all the noisy and violent ways of men to be born again, whereby they try and ascend, but Jesus said nobody but him ascended. And even while on earth, he was seated in heavenly places. And that can be for us too, by being born again, by being born of God's spirit, we also can be seated in heavenly places while we are here on earth.